Welcome back, everybody. We are here at day two of the Relationship Rescue Boot Camp. We're going to discuss the power of awareness with a signature process that I've created. I literally created this during a three and a half year, very toxic relationship. <laughs> I've been able to perfect it and teach it to everyone in my one-on-one -on -one groups and in the boot camp. So before I get into that, I want to do a recap of yesterday. Day one was really about visualization. If you don't choose what you're going to visualize, we keep manifesting the same thing that we're already visualizing. That could be the terrible divorce we went through. That could be a bad breakup. That could be the time you peed on yourself in school when you were a young kid. I don't know. Whatever that story is for you, when you tell the story, that's about empowered speech. So whether you realize it or not, when you see something in your mind, you are visualizing it. You are using your imagination. That in itself is a manifestation. The argument lies between whether it's actually manifesting in your 3D experience or just in your mind. And the homework was you got to choose what you want to visualize. If you're saying, I don't know, nothing is ever going to change. You're going to stay conditional. You're going to stay thinking, okay, my life got better when this man or woman came into my life. And you won't realize that you actually manifested them. It takes you and puts you into a disempowered consciousness, which means you're still a victim. The difference is we don't recognize we're a victim when things are good. We, we only say we're a victim when things are bad. But if you're allowing things to happen and not realizing that you're actually the creator of all the good and the bad, it's hard to take responsibility and make a change. So the homework was to decide on what you are going to visualize moving forward. In this particular case, it's about relationships. And for those of you who joined my private community and app, most of y'all turned in your homework and I was able to give you feedback. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing today. We're gonna to go over this process, I am awake, that I've created and been teaching people in high conflict divorces, teaching people who are single, teaching people who are in new relationships, who are trying not to repeat the patterns of the previous one. Using this I am awake process is life-changing for so many reasons. So without further ado, we're gonna jump right into it and I'm gonna share my slides. And when we're done, we'll see if there's any questions before I jump into the VIP section for the next hour. And I will also post the homework both in the private community and the private Facebook group. So here we go. Day two, I am awake. I'm gonna put it over here so I can see it better and I can still see you. There we go. So I am awake. This is about activating the power of your own awareness. This is going to change the way you perceive how you create reality. It is so powerful that once you do it, you might see results. I'm going to explain some concepts and tell you how to start first thing in the morning. And next thing you know, when you become an expert at this, you can use this so that when you're in an argument with your lover, when you're triggered on that second or third or first date, you can use any moment of a trigger as a catalyst to kickstart your actual spiritual awakening. That means sending your consciousness inward and upward where you have all of your power instead of giving it away to the 3D circumstances. So I'm awake, activating the power of your own awareness. This is how you can command yourself to connect with love for yourself and for others. Everyone from Ram Dass to Abraham Hicks, Neville Goddard, so many more that we can even name today. Awareness, presence, consciousness are all still just other versions of the word love because love is consciousness. Love is fearless. Love is unconditional. All right, we do have someone else showing up, one of my clients. Wonderful, wonderful. There she is. She's also in California. Well, we'll get started. Hey, Allie, good to see you. We're just getting started. Glad you can make it. So moving right along, this 
process helps you awaken to the power within you. Again, we've said this before and we talked about it a little bit yesterday. When we're externally focused, we are bottom up manifesting. We are victims to our circumstances. If my lover, my job, my partner, my ex, my kids, my country, or the world I live in is responsible for my happiness, that means it's also responsible for my sadness. That is conditional. That's focusing outward. This, this process is about using the power of your own intimacy within you to bring about your awakening process. So introduction, we're going to awaken the power within you so we can transform your relationships with conscious awareness. It's saying, hey, honey, hey, guy, hey, girl, you are the one making me unhappy. Well, that's conditional. Whether you stay or go, it's still focused outside of you, which means if I have a bad day because I have a stomach ache or I didn't sleep, I'm going to think my partner is responsible for my bad day. And my consciousness is not going to know anything else. So it's going to cause conflict, pressure on both sides, which doesn't work. As we get older, we get kind of stubborn and we want people to change. That's not what this process is about. It's so that we can change and then observe how our reality actually changes when we change and we use this process. This is one of the processes I teach in the very first two hours I work with the one-on-one -on -one client because I always want you to see the results and this is foundational. Once you see that this process literally changes your reality that same day, it's almost impossible to go back. You may forget it, but you'll remember it the next day when you wake up and you'll start the process all over again because this puts you in the driver's seat for your life. So this process is really simple, but I'm gonna repeat it in two different ways because one process is so that you do it first thing in the morning and the rest of it is so you can do it throughout the day. So here is a step-by-step -step guide. So let's talk about this. When you are asleep, you go in through different brain wave frequencies. Most of us understand the concept of your brain emits a signal. So without going too deep, when we're asleep, we go through various stages of theta, which is a hypnotic state, into delta, which is that deep, deep sleep, that unconscious state. So when we wake up, we go in the opposite direction. We go from delta to theta to eventually alpha, that awakened, heightened awareness, but we're actually awake. And then eventually when we get up and take our shower, drink our coffee and get in the car and get to a traffic jam, now we're into beta, which is physical reality. It means this thing is a sponge and I'm picking it up, I'm moving things around my body. That requires a lot of beta brain wave frequencies. If you're in a conversation with your partner or lover, it's guaranteed to lead to conflict. It is impossible for the brain to reach coherence when it's in beta. If you're in a conversation with your new lover or your old lover and you have a conflict, if you're both hooked up to a brain scan, you would both be in beta or else you would not be able to have a conflict conversation. Here's the problem, trying to get to the bottom of it. Why do I feel this way in my current relationship? If you're trying to figure out what the problem is, you're in beta. You're in a victim consciousness. You cannot and you will not ever actually find a real resolution. You will find a pattern. You'll find a logical reason to say why this is a problem, which is usually conditional. Whatever you've been brought up with, it usually comes across like, I don't like the way you're speaking to me or the way you, the language you're using or the lie that you just said, I perceive a lie, you're already screwed. You can't get out of that. What happens if, if I'm arguing with you, we're both in beta. Eventually, after two minutes or maybe two or three hours, if you're fighting with me before I knew this stuff, one person is going to get stronger. One person is going to burn out and get tired. A way to prove this to yourself is think about in your current or past relationships. How many times did one of you perceive I won or I finally got the answer I was looking for? Maybe even made up, maybe even made love afterwards. And then a couple of hours or days or weeks, did you have the same 
arguments. And the resolution you had before was a waste of time. It meant absolutely nothing. That's why I want you to take this process seriously. Always, 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 and forever walk away from an argument, no matter what the person is doing or saying. Even if you're a really good arguer, I mean, I am, I don't know about you, I can win the argument. But over and over again, I noticed over the years in my relationships, the argument would happen again. And what my party would say, they would say, no, we never had the resolution or no, you just gaslit me. So, or you manipulated me. So again, if you're in conflict and you win, you didn't win. Your partner will think that you manipulated them. It's better to walk away and come back when you can both be happy, healthy, and aligned. Even if you're breaking up, it's better to do it from that calm, peaceful place. Because if you're in high conflict, beta, it ain't worth it. Trust me. But using that basic understanding, we want to look at this process. As you wake up, you cross from delta to theta, which is that drowsy hypnotic state and you cross over into alpha i'm awake but i'm still relaxed we're going to use this transition to capture the power of the present moment so step one when you wake up tomorrow morning when the alarm goes off or when you naturally wake up i want you to first notice the split second the moment that you are aware that you're awake. The moment that you notice you're waking up, that is step one, is to notice, notice your awakening. Number two is to declare to yourself, either out loud or internally to yourself, I am awake. This is acknowledging that you're present before you remember the shitty fight you had yesterday, before you remember that you had to go to work this is allowing you to get present in that power of now, the way Eckhart Tolle talks about this, before the old tape, the old state of consciousness kicks, kicks in and your old identity downloads, which might be conflict or I'm lonely and single or I'm unhappily married, things like that. This is going to allow you to bypass that before it's too late. So number one, notice your awakening. Number two, declare, I am awake with, with confidence because your I am statement is your truth. If you say I'm awake, you're saying I'm conscious. I'm in a state of unconditional love. I am who I am right now, not the story of my life and my history. Then number three, very important, choose your focus. So what do I mean? I want you to choose not a positive thought, not I'm going to have a really great day. No, I want you to choose a satisfying thought. So it could be about sex. That's a satisfaction. That's a bodily feeling. It can be how great this pillow feels. It can be sinking into the bed. You have to pick a satisfaction satisfying thought because this is going to teach you how you're actually manifesting your life you just never knew it so you choose the satisfying thought to focus on for a few seconds up to a minute you hold on to whatever that thought is so hold on to whatever that feeling and thought is until you literally feel your body shifting now here's what happens nitrous oxide gets released into the blood vessels, your body will respond to the satisfying thought. Oh, the shoulders might drop, your chest expands, you feel warmth, you might even have a tear coming down your face and a natural smile coming from nowhere. When that happens, because you've been sitting completely still, and this is probably happening in the first 30 seconds to a minute and a half of you waking up in the morning, Step four is this, notice that you just did that. Notice that you created a literal manifestation in your body just with your focused attention on a thought. Once you recognize this, you then now 
have proof that you literally create your experience of reality. So let's reverse engineer this. When you go through conflict, you're driving home, you're going into an argument, you're having a fight with your lover, you anticipate it, you think about it. Your body prepares for the struggle. Your heart rate might change. You might breathe shallow, you might be breathing in your chest. And if, if you weren't looking in the mirror, you wouldn't notice it. You do it automatically. And then when the fight happens or the breakup in a new relationship happens, you wonder, what the hell happened? You think it's them. I'm telling you, no, it's you. You just don't know it. So step one, two, three, four, you master this over the next couple of days, your life will completely change. So moving on again, notice and repeat your awakening. I always say this as part of the homework. I want you to do this first thing tomorrow. So remember, notice the first moment you wake up. This works if you don't realize you're awake until two o'clock in the afternoon. What would happen? You now remember you were supposed to notice the first moment that you were awake. Choose a satisfying thought. Hold it until you feel it in your body and then claim, I created that. That's how this process works. And this is the one process that will change your life over everything else I teach. It's one of the two processes I teach everyone in their first session with me because this teaches you that you have it all wrong. You've been creating reality backwards. This is how consciousness creates and manifests your thoughts into actual physical reality. But once you experience this, you will believe it and then have that confidence and empowerment to use it when you have a bad day, when you have a fight with your lover. So number one, do it first in the morning. So start the day off tuning into the first power of the, the moment you wake up. Practice that awareness, being present with your thoughts and your feelings. I'm getting angry. I'm awake. Focus on something else until you're not angry anymore. I'm not a victim to my relationship. I'm not a victim to my career. I'm not a victim to the world state. I'm literally creating and manifesting at the speed of thought. So you set the tone for your entire milliseconds of the morning. Then as you move through the world, whether you're in a relationship or not, the only difference is you, you apply this in your relationship or with every person, place, or thing you interact with in the 3D. Because the more you practice this, the more you'll get aware and stay aware for the rest of your life. It's a process that never stops. So again, declare your awareness. Say, I am awake. Even if you're in the middle of a conflict or an argument, wake up, I'm awake. Now, all of a sudden, you're focusing on your full attention on yourself in the here and now. Then you'll realize, holy crap, I was future casting a problem. Oh, my gosh, I was traveling to the past. If you're in a new relationship, you might be catching yourself going back in time, thinking about your ex-husband or wife, think about your last relationship. No, that's traveling through time. You want to stay here and now, and this process helps you do that before you say, no, I believe you're saying this to me because 10 other people have said to me before, no, that's obsolete. We don't care what happened in the past. We care about right now because here is where all your manifesting power actually is. So then again, you say you're awake when you notice the problem or the situation or your awareness shifting, you embrace it with full attention, no half ass in this right? We're going all in, all in. You can't be half present. You are present or you're not. You're either conscious or you're unconscious. There's no middle ground, okay? Because your brainwave frequency is one frequency, not several. I know Alicia's heard me say this a hundred times. It's like going to the gym. The first time you're going to feel pain. Second time you're sore. Third, fourth, sixth, it gets easier and easier and easier. And you'll notice when you're conscious or unconscious for the rest of your life. And that gives you empowerment no matter what's happening. Again, choosing your focus, pick a thought. Don't pick a positive, subjective thought. You're not having a good day today. You are thinking about the sensation 
of something. It feels good to eat a pizza. It feels good to feel the bed sheets. It feels good to feel the AC. You are creating all the time. You want to choose where you focus on because if you don't, you're going to default to what you normally focus on, which might be the story from the day before or the last several years if you haven't been practicing conscious attention. Okay, so pick a thought that has a good feeling sensation, hold on to that focus firmly, and then notice a change, a bodily shift in your body. The feeling is the secret. That's not mine. I totally stole that from Neville Goddard, who taught Law of Assumption. There's actually a book called Feeling is a Secret, but that's the point. You choose a thought and then notice the feeling that accompanies it. That's how we manifest our reality. We've just been trained to believe it's not done this way. Okay. So, and then that, remember that fourth step, realize your power. You shifted your mindset, not the new lover, not the divorce that went well. That's why you do this process to realize when someone else triggers, you know, that's your reaction to them. You triggered yourself. That's not about shame. That's about true, authentic empowerment. Then you own your impact. I want you to take responsibility for the losses and the wins, because when you're responsible for the loss, you can then change it. Also, when you have a win, if you're not responsible, you'll throw it away. You won't, you won't accept responsibility. You'll say someone else gave you the win. No, you are responsible for all of it, whether you realize it or not. I want you to realize it so you can move forward. This is how you access your potential and you affect your relationship and your reality. So application, if we are out there and we're single and we're dating or in a new relationship or one for a few months, this will help you when you have nervousness, when you think of, oh my gosh, this girl or guy is starting to behave and do the same things that my previous partner did. No, you notice your attention, you choose to wake up, choose a different thought that is in the now, hold on to it until whatever anxiety you're feeling in your body goes away, and that reminds you that you're in control of all of your thoughts and feelings and behaviors on a date in a new relationship. Because again, we all know if we're not in our early 20s, <laughs> When you're in a new relationship, things that look similar to the previous relationship tend to bring up those old thoughts and accompanying feelings. And we wonder why we have an argument that sounds just like the last 10 relationships. So that's how we would apply it in a dating or a new relationship. Now, most people I deal with are going through some version or about to a divorce or they're in a high conflict. They're in a relationship that's not going so well. So here's how you apply it there. You have a heated discussion. I use myself as an example. I won all the fights with all my lovers. I always attract to all my partners back five, 10 times minimum, all the serious relationships in my life. I've always got them to come back. I won the argument. I proved that I was right and they were wrong and they would come back apologizing. Guess what? It was worthless. It didn't matter. I could be in a three hour argument and still win and maybe even make love after. It was all bullshit. So when you're in a conflict argument, whether you can catch this early or whether you're into hour one or two or three of the argument, Notice your awakening. Wake up. I'm awake. Choose a present thought that is satisfying. Replacing the current experience of reality that you're stuck in this trap of. Hold on to that vision, that thought, then sensation until you actually notice you don't want to fight anymore. Your voice goes back to normal. Your heart rate slows down. Suddenly you realize you're breathing in your chest and now you're breathing in your stomach. You wake up, all of a sudden, you know you're in control. Your partner, that guy or that girl, could be lying through their teeth, screaming and cussing at you. And you'll notice 
they have no power over you. All of a sudden, whether you choose to stay or choose to go, doesn't matter because you are the creator of your experience. Let that dragon run out of steam. If you're conscious and awake, your partner will eventually stop yelling after a few minutes if you're not responding, telling them they're lying or trying to win. That just is more fire against fire until you eventually you break up and repeat the cycle all over again, either with that person coming and going back and forth like I've done in my life or the next person, different name, different face, same experience. There's a reason why most people that work with me are over 20, over 30, because we've all experienced and have a little bit of wisdom before you show up on my camera. I know that I'm part of the problem. I just don't know how to fix it, Anthony. This process fixes it, even when you're in high conflict. Remember, I don't care whether you stay or go. I want you to go or stay as an empowered man or woman. That's why your life changes from within. So that's two applications. So here's some tips and best practices. Number one, get awake and stay awake. If you can do it once, you can do it over and over again. I have a client who, you know, and about 50% of my clients will say this, like they see the experience, they notice the miracle. And after a couple of weeks, they'll say, man, I'm just really tired. And I'm like, why? Because I have to keep waking up. Well, what's the alternative? It's a new habit. It's a new muscle to exercise. It's just easier to get stuck into the pattern. If you are someone that surrenders and gives into the fight, that's easy. If you're someone like me who rose to the occasion and went into the fight, that was always easier for me until I did this process. Like I said, I learned and created this process during a three and a half year high conflict relationship with the woman who I thought was the love of my life. My point is I love bigger, harder, and more vulnerable every time I fall in love because I'm not here to be safe. I want to be in love. But when I learned this process, I noticed my ability to emotionally regulate regardless of what my partner was doing. So whether you stay or go, I want you to be happy, empowered, and aligned, and then choose what words come out of your mouth or whether you move out or stay, okay? So number one, get awake and then use process to stay awake. Eventually, you won't be able to live any other way, okay? Number two, choose yourself. This means intimacy. If you're focused on the other person, it's not gonna work. Focus on your awareness, you waking up. It's about your process. That keeps the power on you, so I want you to be intimate with you, not them. Number three, choose trust every time. Why? Because you are the operant power. If we're in a mirror universe, which we are, your partner is a reflection of you. So again, focusing on them is a waste of time. It will always fix itself again, repeating the process over and over again. So when you make yourself the operant power, you change everything because you are the creator and you remember that even as you navigate complicated situations. Number four, it starts and ends with you. Whether it's a relationship or your reality, everything you experience is on you, not on them. Again, this is about your self-empowerment, not giving your power away. Now, troubleshooting. When you have conflicts escalating, remember, choose to, I need to rewrite this one, Choose to make that a catalyst for your awakening. You're noticing that you're sad. You feel disempowered. You feel lied to, cheated on, argued, disrespected in your relationships. I'm awake. Use the trigger as fuel to awaken yourself. It's very easy to use this process in relationships because your relationship is a mirror. They're the ones who to trigger you faster than anything else on the planet, more than your job, more than your economic standing, more than anything else. Your partner is the first person to trigger you because they're a version of you, they're a reflection of you. Number two, lack of communication. Yeah, don't focus on the fact that your partner doesn't listen to you or lets you be seen and heard. That's focusing away from you. That's victim consciousness. Choose to talk to yourself first 
and continue to talk to yourself. I have a client in our masterclass who shared two weeks ago that his own therapist was confused how he's able to get through his divorce process, save his marriage, and rekindle their relationship. He said to his therapist, well, it's simple. I know my wife is me. So when I talk to her, I recognize that I'm talking to myself. It just works. And this guy is a PhD. He's a scientist, he's a doctor, and his own therapist just looked at him like he was crazy. And he told us all in our master class two weeks ago, well, I don't know how it works, it just works. And we all laughed, right? Because we've done the process, so we just know it works. If you want to go into the science of it, go for it. That's not my job to prove it to you. I want you to use the process to prove it to you. That's more important than knowledge. And then number three in troubleshooting, if you're stuck in old patterns, the fight keeps coming up over and over again with the current lover, or you notice you've had this argument these words said, this fight with all of your other partners beforehand, ding, 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 that's a pattern. Remind yourself of your new awareness that you're the creator of your experience. You can choose what you want to manifest. You can choose what you want to be a part of. Remember this when the old patterns manifest. So in conclusion, take the next step. Make these changes now, meaning Start today, make the commitment that first thing tomorrow morning, you're going to change your perspective of how you experience reality. First thing in the morning, that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. I don't really have any questions. And, okay. you know, I more or less believe this. So, but I like that you've formalized it basically. Yeah. And so that's yeah. nice. And so that makes it easy to implement. I always say like calculus, you got to learn. People want to understand calculus. Like we just got to learn to do calculus and then you'll understand it. And so that's kind of what you're saying about this. And, you know, that works with a lot of complicated things. So. Yes, I agree. Thank you for that. And again, this process, there's so many things out there that are similar. And I just found they were really complicated. And again, you might have an experience that makes you aware of this, like you said, but to have a formula. So great point. This is one of the ones where we spend a lot of time learning it when you first start working with me in the group or one-on-one -on -one, and eventually it becomes automatic, but you have to start somewhere. So if you're already aware of this and you believe it and you see the formula that's put into practice starting tomorrow, you won't need to think about it for the rest of your life. You'll just do it by muscle memory. We are, again, we are creatures of habit. We are pattern machines. We are highly adaptable. So you learn this process, like you said, like calculus. I'm, I'm terrible at math, so I'm laughing at that part. I never, I was never <laughs> able to learn formulas. Even writing is hard because of that. You know, I believed the learning disabilities when I was diagnosed. Now I know that's programming I can let go of, but it's still there. So, but I appreciate that. You learn the process like an athlete learning how to run a certain way then eventually they don't have to think about it. It becomes second nature. Now, why is that important? Because we're already operating from automatic behaviors. So that's a great example. Thank you so much, kid. I love it. I'm glad you're gonna try it. So the homework is do it tomorrow morning. And if you don't realize your agreement to do it until two o'clock in the afternoon or three o'clock, that's the first moment of awareness. Do it then. One, two, three, four, I'm awake. I have done this process with a, with a, a father post-divorce where he won everything. But because of parental alienation, his own three daughters would call him a stranger when he walked up to the school for his court-appointed time. And every teacher had to respond even though they knew what was happening. And he was so stuck on the, on the, the self-righteousness of it, on the anger of it all. This isn't right. And then one day, he recognizes as he's lying in a pool of his own tears, I'm awake, I'm creating this. And it all went away. And then he was able to go through that experience with his daughters. He stopped reacting to it. <laughs> but guess what? They stopped doing it. So powerful stuff. So practicing your relationship, kid, I'd love to hear the examples or any homework for you if you wanna share in the private group. I'd love to hear your experience. Thank you so much okay. for being here. I know that every time I join, it's just such a blessing. It's just keep learning. You know, I like what you said. 
and I even like your title, you know, rescuing, because it's making us self-aware of what the help that we need. You know, it just, that word just in my mind brings hope, you know, rescue. It's just like we need to rescue ourselves. We need to help ourselves to be able to help others. So every time I join, it just, like I said, it's just a blessing. Learning from you has been an amazing trip an amazing journey that has helped me cope with all this stuff that I've been through. And it just, I'm very grateful. Oh, I'm so grateful to see mm -hmm. you here. So yeah, kid, Alicia's uh, one of my one-on-one -on -one clients who work every single week, you know, and she's so gracious. Like I always have to move her during the boot camp because normally we meet during boot camp time because she's also in California. So I'm so glad you made it today. So yes, I'm glad that you were fit. It was meant to be. <laughs> I'm sure you saw the new style of the slides. I'm really loving this. So I don't have to, because before this kid, I used to do the classic slides where you don't see me. And I was like, there has to be a better way. And so I really like this process where I can show the slide. Usually I have like, you know, so much text, hard to read through. And I'm really loving this. And so I'm glad that you're here to experience it, kid. And I'm glad that you're so open. And I'm glad that you're in a relationship where you get to experiment with this stuff. And, and again, thank you so much for using the program last night and turning in your homework so that I can give you feedback. And I'll do the same thing tonight. If you have any questions today or tomorrow or the next day, feel free to drop another message to me and I'll respond to you as soon as I get to it. So. Kid, if you don't have any questions or anything else, I'll see you tomorrow, I man. One, I have one comment. Go you for know, it. The slides, I'm doing this on an iPad. The screen's not big, right? Yeah. It's hard to read the small text on the slides on the you. iPad. So I just thought yeah. I'd let you know because I know you're saying you're rejiggering things. So just something to think about when you're yeah, in Yeah, thank process. you. So when I make the slides, I have to go through every single one and make them bigger. And then the other issue, when it's an actual big slide, you don't see me. So it's that balance. But thank you for that information. I would like to be able to get the the text bigger on the slides that are right here. So now that I'm, I think yesterday, I made mean, a How about yesterday? Was it the same? Because they were bigger yesterday. I, I don't recall. I don't recall it. So maybe it wasn't a problem. But today, it's it's definitely a problem because like the little things written below the big things. Yeah, it's very very hard to read. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because yesterday I kind of just made everything either a title size or a H1 size. Today mm -hmm. I did title H1 and H4. So now that lets me know it's better that it all looks the same because at least yeah. it's legible. So thank you for that yeah. feedback. That does help a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, brother. Cheers. Sounds good. All right. Thanks a lot. Alicia, I'll see you tomorrow too. Bye. Bye-bye.